There are hundreds of e-bike converters out there to choose from, but not all of them offer the similar features. Going for the advanced one costs an arm and a leg, and the adjustment will make your head spin for its sheer complexity issues. To solve them, Lival, once a smart cycling helmet manufacturer, launched PikaBoost in 2021 with its all-in-one battery system. With tool-free installation, intelligence assistance, and stress-free cycling solution, any bike could have been turned into an e-bike with minimum to no installation hassle. With widespread positive feedback from far and wide bike enthusiasts, the company decided to launch its PikaBoost 2, a more updated version of its predecessor with more power assist up to 500 watt with a slew of advanced features to equip riders with all the riding comforts they can ever imagine. Here's a breakdown of both versions to help you decide which one to invest in. The Lival PikaBoost is an older model, and the updated version is named the PikaBoost 2, so in general the newer model is bound to be superior due to its technological advancements and upgraded design. A more enhanced motor is what makes the PikaBoost 2 upgraded from its older version of PikaBoost, along with a high battery life, faster charging capabilities, and a better speed range. Plus, new features such as regenerative braking workout riding mode, and remote control safety features are present in the upgraded version. Moreover, the automatic adaptive rate 2.0 technology ensures the sensors are fast enough to learn your way of pedaling to give you a smooth riding experience compared to PikaBoost's older version. Overall, the updates on the PikaBoost 2 are not just a mere upgrade of some parts. It's a significant improvement over its older version, while the price range is not as high as it should be. However, in some areas, the older Leval PikaBoost might be a better option for you. Watch till the end to find out. Although the Leval PikaBoost and PikaBoost 2 are both e-bike conversion gadgets that exhibit an efficient and convenient way to apply electric assistance to your regular bike, yet there are some major differences between Leval PikaBoost and PikaBoost 2 in terms of design and build quality. The older version of PikaBoost is slightly larger and heavier than the updated PikaBoost 2, which makes the first one more tangible to be noticed behind the seat post and harder to install on some bikes, even though the company claims it could fit in any tires on any bikes. And that's true to most cases, as we tested it ourselves and we did manage to fit it in almost all the bikes. Moving on, the first version of PikaBoost has a wired remote control, whereas the PikaBoost 2 uses a wireless remote control that allows the bikers to easily transition into any of the four modes this version 2 offers with just a press on a key. Additionally, when tires have V-shaped design, it increases the tractions with the road, allowing the tire to better grip the road with its multiple contact points. On top of that, when the converter itself has a V-shaped pattern, it aligns perfectly with the tires and increases better contact with the road. It also has a specialized tread pattern, meaning it exudes drainage grooves with the grooves and lugs on the tire's surface, making it extremely efficient removing water to avoid any slippery. The device can easily fit tire widths between 25, 65 millimeters. Both versions are built using very high quality materials to ensure their durability and longevity, along with the added capabilities of withstanding harsh weather conditions and both motor and battery of old and new versions being IP66 water resistant, making them perfect for year round use anywhere in the world. The most important feature of any electrical device is its motor. This is where the PikaBoost 2 shows its upgrade from its older version. The most significant difference between Lival PikaBoost versus PikaBoost 2 is its power output. The PikaBoost 2 has a more powerful motor that can support up to 500 watts of power, while the first version of PikaBoost can only handle up to 350 watts. While riding upward on the hills or needing more support during headwinds, the PikaBoost 2 is a better option for you since it has a more powerful motor system and boosts a kick when you experience resistance against gravity on the hill with a pain felt on the knees. It has a brushless DC motor, similar to the first PikaBoost. The motor is built with 99.99% .99 pure copper windings and a magnetic core to achieve 88% conversion efficiency. Along with that, its high speed revolutions per minute and peak power of 500 watts can help you reach speeds of up to 32 kilometers per hour. While the motor of PikaBoost version 1 is still a powerful choice, it is not quite as strong as the PikaBoost 2. 
If you want the maximum amount of power in your e-bike, then without a doubt, PikaBoost 2 is a better choice. However, investing based only on its motor power is not enough. The battery capacity and range of speed are also important aspects that you need to analyze before making a wise decision. There's no point in buying an e-bike conversion device if it can't last long during your outdoor adventures. Fortunately, both PikaBoost and PikaBoost 2 are renowned for their long-lasting battery life and range. However, the upgraded PikaBoost 2 has a more efficient high-capacity 158-watt-hour lithium-ion battery, outperforming the PikaBoost old version. The high-power battery enables a range of up to 70 kilometers after a single charge while assisted riding. For even more power, you can exalt the additional 20-watt-hour battery that offers a range of up to 96 kilometers. Plus, PikaBoost 2's battery has PD3.1 and QC3 fast charging technology, which ensures a full charge in only three hours. Furthermore, the gate also doubles as a portable power station that can provide up to 65 watts of input and 100 watts of output power. In comparison to that, the PikaBoost first version has 18 cells of 18,650 lithium batteries that allow 3 ampere hours per cell and result in a 199.8 watt hour battery capacity. Overall, it can deliver a range of up to 30 kilometers, 18 miles, compared to a bulky e bike. Therefore, for a superior battery capacity and range, PikaBoost 2 is the preferred choice. While we haven't yet explored all the design features, such as the riding modes of these devices, it's clear that PikaBoost 2 offers a significant advantage in terms of battery performance. The PikaBoost old version offers three amazing riding modes. First, the cruise mode is perfect for traveling short distance commuters, since this mode is the most labor saving, but the most power consuming because it lets your hands off the handles throughout your journey. Then the Eco Mode Assists are designed for uphill terrains. Besides, it is very useful for climbing bumpy roads and can provide a good balance between battery endurance and manpower saving. The motor automatically switches off on downhill and flat roads and enters the regenerative system to reduce energy consumption. And lastly, Exercise Mode can help you achieve fitness by cycling. On the other hand, the PikaBoost 2 offers four power assistance modes. First, the workout mode can turn your bike into a training machine by adding resistance. This mode is best for indoor or outdoor workouts. Similar to the old version, it also has Eco and Cruise mode, which provides help during inclines. Then comes the power assist mode, which allows you to enjoy smart and balanced support that makes riding your e-bike effortless on flat terrain and gentle slopes. The mode allows you to quickly switch between assist and cruise modes with the convenient remote controller. To summarize, the PikaBoost 2 has more riding modes and it offers a more versatile riding experience. The prime feature of both LiveAll PikaBoost and PikaBoost 2 is their compatibility. The PikaBoost has a tool-free installation process and it is compatible with every bike measuring 660 by 338 by 130 millimeters and weighing 3 kilograms. In contrast, the PikaBoost 2 has an adjustable design and can easily and seemingly integrate with wheel sizes from 14 to 29 inches. This means it can accommodate a wide variety of bikes such as mountain bikes, road bikes and hybrids. To make it more convenient for the riders, Livol also supplies its tire designs for the PikaBoost, which will allow you to adjust based on road or mountain driving. Both devices are very easy and simple to install. It only takes 30 seconds to less than a minute device to device-wise to mount and unmount the device to any bike. The PikaBoost 2 has put together multiple safety features to help you avoid dangerous situations. The features include an e-brake that automatically cuts off the motor whenever you brake the bike. Then, the two most innovative features that can be seen in both models are the fall detection and slip detection, which enhances the safety and shuts off the motor if the bike tilts frequently or the rear wheel loses traction. Similar to the upgraded PikaBoost 2, the PikaBoost first version's main safety concern is brake failure, especially during high speeds. And that's why it also has an e-braking system, which is fully automated and can significantly reduce the risk of crashes. The model also has built-in acceleration and brake sensors that can detect braking behavior and immediately stop the motor and power output if required. 
This advanced dual detection technology can effectively prevent brake failures and reduce braking effectiveness. Both models feature an auto-sensing rear light feature that works by illuminating automatically when the brake line is engaged. This rear light has a striking wide-angle beam, which is visible from a distance and can ensure safety during rides. Therefore, the primary difference between the two models is the PikaBoost 2's added remote control feature, which increases convenience and security for the riders during their journey. Now that you know everything about the Lival PikaBoost versus PikaBoost 2, it all boils down to one question. Is the PikaBoost 2 worth an upgrade? Well, the PikaBoost 2 has several significant improvements over its previous version that make it a persuasive upgrade for those who want a more powerful and versatile e-bike conversion kit. The PikaBoost 2 is a big upgrade from the original PikaBoost. It has more power, which means your ride starts smoothly and you can easily climb hills. This is perfect for riders who love tackling tough trails or want a more exciting ride. Additionally, the PikaBoost 2 has a battery that lasts longer. You can ride farther without needing to charge it as often. This is ideal for those who enjoy long trips and don't want to worry about running out of power during their adventures. The PikaBoost 2 comes with a smarter and sleeker design that fits nicely into your bike's frame, making it look cleaner and more attractive. The new conversion kit is also tougher and can handle different weather conditions, so it works reliably no matter where you ride. In short, the PikaBoost 2 is a big upgrade with more power, longer battery life, better design, and greater durability. If you want a more powerful and enjoyable electric bike kit, the PikaBoost 2 is a great choice. But if you're on a budget, the original PikaBoost is still a versatile and strong option, even though it doesn't have the latest features. We're done exploring the amazing e-bike conversation gadgets by Lival. But the winner of the battle between the Lival PikaBoost versus PikaBoost 2 can only be determined by you. Both are built with cutting-edge technology and durable materials to last you a long time. Their primary goal is to make your life easier. Since the PikaBoost 2 is a more updated and advanced version of the initial model, it comes with a higher price tag. But for someone who craves the best performance, the upgraded version is the perfect companion for their bike riding adventures. So, the decision of picking a winner falls on you. Only you can decide which device checks all your requirement boxes and fits your lifestyle and budget. NB, at some point, it looks like to me you just put the information here in general. Wasn't it supposed to be more personal, like you tested the device and based on your experience what you got? Should it be personal use or in general use?